CataractCoach.com, your first proctored surgical cases. You're going to be required to have proctored cases in your new practice. So I'm going to show you the whole video start to finish. This is at four times normal speed. So the video is about six minutes or so. The actual unedited surgery in real time was 25 minutes for a routine cataract. You can see it's not a dense cataract. It's a good dilation. Everything looks normal. Now, a proctored case means that you are trying to join and operate in a new facility, whether it's a hospital, a surgery center, or some other place. And they need to ensure that you're going to be a reasonable surgeon. Now watch this case here. What do you first notice? A baby rexus. You're starting off the case with a baby rexus. This is going to be a very tough case. That is, at best, a 4 millimeter rexus. And so hydrodissection being done here, the hard part is even remembering where that rexus is at this point because it's so small. You got to be careful not to damage it with the phaco probe. So the surgeon here is now going to start some sort of phaco procedure, and it's a very long procedure. This is an experienced surgeon apparently, already did residency and fellowship, already board certified, already been in practice a few years. But the surgeon wants to operate a new facility. So proctor cases means you're going to have to essentially have an experienced surgeon who's at that center or at that hospital watch you as you do your first few cases to ensure that, yes, you are a capable, competent, reasonable surgeon. And this is one of the first proctored cases for this doctor. And you can see the technique looks okay, but it's really not being very efficient here in getting the nucleus out. So the chops aren't really succeeding so well. And remember, you still have that baby rexus, which is going to confound things and make it a lot harder. And your pupil is going to start coming down now. And so the video is going in and out of focus because the, this doctor is probably accommodating too much. Because we have an anonymous surgery. We don't know who this is. It's not the point. The point is, what do you do here? So you need to have sufficient surgical skill in, it in order to be able to operate in a new facility. Yeah, you're going to need to have your cases proctored. So now I'm left with a bold out nucleus, which is still quite uh, a lot of epinuclear and even just nuclear material remaining. Perhaps some more hydro dissection, maybe there's visco dissection. Going back in with a phaco probe, um, looks like some sort of ball tipped chopper instrument or second instrument, and really not succeeding here. So you have to be very cautious <laughs> that you make sure you learn sufficiently during the course of your training that you have enough of a skill set to be able to be a, a good example for a proctored case. You'll be able to complete your surgery without any complications in a timely manner. And just think about this. For this surgery center or this hospital, there is a business to medicine too. And if you're taking 25 minutes of cut time for a routine case, that means probably at best you're only going to do one cataract an hour. Because you're going to set up, you're going to turn over, the next thing, and the next thing, it's going to be an hour long. Now here there's a question, is the posterior capsule intact? Is the anterior capsule rim intact? So more viscoelastic going in the eye. And now you're going to open up multiple tubes. In this case, four tubes of viscoelastic were used. Remember, the surgery center gets a fixed facility fee, or the hospital gets a fixed facility fee. And out of that, they have to subtract out all the supplies that you used, and also time's a factor. If one surgeon can do two cataracts or three cataracts in an hour, and you can only do one in an hour, well, the surgery center or the hospital is paying the same amount of staffing. They're paying one hour of labor for a scrub tech, a circulator, etc. And so OR time is expensive, and you want to be efficient and not waste time. So you want to be very conservative in the amount of time you spend. Don't rush a case, obviously, but you need to be able to complete a case efficiently in a timely manner. Also, in terms of supplies, you don't need excessive supplies here. So now more viscoelastic is going inside the eye, and you can see it appears to have some um, lens material that's kind of in that anterior hyaloid face, some lens particles. So taking out the cortex here, um, I think the posterior capsule is intact, but yeah, that anterior capsule rim at the top of your screen, so patient's nasal aspect, has split. And now there's a lot of cortex there in the subincisional space. And let's see what's going to happen here. So there is lens material in the anterior hyaloid face behind the posterior capsule. And there's also a lot of subincisional uh, residual cortex that has to be removed. So now let's see what we've got for the lens here. And so... 
this is a tough case. This is not a pretty case. So, oh boy. Now, injecting the lens and look how, wouldn't you rather just enlarge your incision or be a little more gentle instead of pushing that eye so far out of primary just to try to get the injector tip in there? So remember, cornea doesn't stretch. If you have to push this hard, you may be damaging or ripping the incision. So look at, again, counter traction with the chopper, the cornea wrinkling. Oh boy, now the lens is misloaded. The leading haptic going in the wrong direction. That has to be flipped over. And you know there's already an anterior capsule tear. It's like the last thing you want now to have that capsule rip out even more. You don't, you don't want excessive lens manipulation here. Now I'm just getting more viscoelastic. Again, that anterior capsule is already ripped out all the way out, probably to the designer support. And look at the retained lens material. Again, that's in the anterior hyaloid face behind the posterior capsule. It went through that area where the anterior capsule rim zipped out to the zyler support. And this is not going to be a good case. This patient's going to have a lot of residual inflammation, have a, probably some vitritis or inflammation in the vitreous as well. It's a tough case. And it just proves the point that, listen, you need to be your own toughest critic and make sure that you can successfully pass your proctored cases.